Right now with us is someone who helped fund Discord early on. He joins us to talk about startups, tech investing, and so much more. Has his own news this morning as well. I want to welcome Greylock partner Reed Hoffman, also, of course, the co-founder of LinkedIn. And Reed, before we get uh, to the launch of your new fund, I do want to actually ask you uh, about uh, Discord because it, you, were, you were an early investor in this company, and, and they've had remarkable success. Uh, yeah, Discord is amazing. I mean, uh, exactly as Jason was just saying in that interview, it's a community. It's a it's a it's a kind of a where your friends get together and talk, and it's a platform by which they can share multiple experiences together. With obviously a high focus on gaming right now, and you know the progress the company's made. Um, obviously, the, the 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 pandemic times where people want this ability to come together in community has been just stunning. I got to ask you, Reed. Though you were also an early investor in Facebook, and I had asked uh, Jason about whether they've become sort of beneficiaries of some of the challenges that Facebook is now confronting. What do you think of those challenges that Facebook's confronting right now? Well, you know, obviously, I've been reading the same news that other people have, and uh, the the notion that you would say, "Hey, we have a bunch of internal reports about." things that are ill health for society and are not decisively acting on them would be very disturbing in any circumstance. And so I, I don't know any of the, 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 the truth of those mechanisms. I do think that the, the question about when you get to a certain large scale as a network and you're, you have to think of society as a customer as well as the individuals and you have to think about what's the right dialogue by which you're in society. And this is one of the things I you know, wrote about in Blitzscaling. It's one of the things right. that I have written about a bunch on LinkedIn you know, saying, Hey, uh, make sure that you're talking to individuals and to society about what you're trying to do to, to, to be better for society and be transparent about that. And you should be transparent about your challenges too, because then people will trust you more. And, you know, obviously, the, I don't know what the details of within the recent reporting, you know, which parts are right and which parts are wrong. Um, but obviously, the pattern as true would be disturbing. What would you do if you were running Facebook? Well, I think. Um, you know, one of the really key things here, I think all of these, you know, kind of tech platforms is you have to establish trust. You know, it's one of the things that, you know, we put a lot of energy in a LinkedIn uh, to make sure that we were doing and being very clear about uh, kind of uh, what our rules are and how it works and, and why we think we're better for society in the things that we're doing. And I think that communication and that uh, revelation, like, for example, if I were, uh, you know, under as much, you know, question as Facebook is say, look, here's we're going to start publishing some dashboards that we're going to have audited by our auditors about, you know, what's actually happening within content patterns, like what's happening within, you know, kind of sentiment analysis or, you know, ability to kind of deal with kind of questions about, for example, you know, anti-vaccination campaigns or other sorts right. of things, and 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 to, and to communicate transparently. Look, we are working on this. This is how we're doing it, and this is how we're making progress. Um, I also had asked Jason, I'm very curious what your reaction is to the Apple Epic case and, and specifically the 30 percent commission at, at the App Store. It, it is a, a miracle uh, to some degree what they what Apple has created. And yet at the same time, you could argue that their success is so great that they now have a remarkable influence uh, on business. Uh, and I think, by the way, you put it very well. Look, I think part of the question that you have when you have uh, like such a dominant you know, kind of mobile platform is, well, you need to allow kind of free innovation within uh, the apps and the security and the safety is good and all the rest. Uh, and it's, you know, super important and, and as part of consumer choices, but, you know, it's one of the things where it's actually very difficult for startups to get traction outside of like uh, communication and outside of games or gaming platforms like, um, you know, kind of discord, you know, in this environment. And, you know, the, the simplest way to say, well, how do you, how do you, how do kind of third party developers have the same kind of openness that you see on the internet, uh, that you even see in other platforms like, you know, like Windows, the OS, um, you know, and, and, uh, and enable that kind of freedom of developer and, and creation together with safety and controls where consumers can say what they want to see and what they don't want to say, just like on the other the platforms. Right. Hey, Reid, uh, you do have some news uh, this morning. Uh, your firm raising another $500 million for, a, for, a seed, for seeds, specifically investing uh, at, at the seed round. What do you see happening in, in the Valley right now? And I, maybe I, we shouldn't be talking about the Valley. Maybe it's the country, depending on whether you're going to start investing in companies that are based in Austin and other places. But, but how do you see it? And to the degree that people 
are wondering whether we are in a bubble given the, the high valuations across the board. How does it change the investing landscape? Well, I think what you're seeing in the investing landscape is everyone knows that technology is going to continue to be the future, just like we've seen uh, during the pandemic, a huge acceleration in digital transformation. You know, when people say, what's the technology of the future? You say, well, it's artificial intelligence. Well, also, it's cryptocurrency and fintech. Oh, also, it's AR and VR. It's synthetic biology. It's again, on and on, you know, enterprise software, uh, cloud, all of the mobile, all of these things happening. And so uh, that's part of the reason why so much capital is, is going into it. And when you look at that as the kind of the venture uh, side, and you say, well, if you're high uh, kind of company builders um, that, you know, we at Greylock are, you say, well, what's the best way to be from the first check to building massive companies at scale? Well, we should uh, you know, double down on our historic focus of being the, you know, one of the first checks in, the partner from, you know, like with Workday and Palo Alto Networks, you know, the companies were founded uh, within Greylock all the way through uh, becoming an ecosystem and industry transforming. And that's already true. Uh, for uh, how Greylock's been investing, but it's it's a way of saying let's 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 double down on that, let's focus on that, let's communicate because there's so much capital. The real question is not capital. The real question is company building and the help in so doing. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.